We're going to jump right into today's lesson by talking about some word problems and the applications of logarithms uh, in word problems. Rock concert. The loudness L in decibels of the sound L is 10 equals 10 log I over M, where I is the intensity of the sound and M is the minimum intensity of sound detectable by the human ear. Residents living several miles from concert venue can hear the music at an intensity of 66.6 decibels. How many times the minimum intensity of sound detectable by the human ear is this sound if M is defined to be M, to, or M is defined to be one? So a little background about uh, the decibel scale. Uh, everybody understands that decibels is based upon, or is a measurement of how loud a sound is. What they often don't understand exactly is how decibels relates to each other. So every 10 decibels is 10 times louder than the previous multiple of 10. For example, a decibel level of 40 compared to a decibel level of 30, a decibel level of 40 is 10 times louder than a decibel of 30. It's not just a little bit louder or, you know, 33% louder because that would be 33% uh, of 30 is another four, uh, 10 decibels. Uh, every 10 decibels is 10 times louder. So when you go to a 50, that is 10 times louder than a 40. And 10, 40 is 10 times louder than a 30. That means a 50 is actually 100 times louder than a 30. And that's the way the decibel scale works. So what we're trying to do is to figure out is how many times the minimum intensity of sound is 66.6 .6 decibels. So using the formula that they give us, which is L equals 10 log I over M. And notice that the log does not have a little base next to the G that we normally see uh, to determine what the base is. So that means this is automatically a log of base 10. So we know a few things already. Uh, we know we're trying to figure out the, um, the intensity of sound for a 66.6 .6 decibel sound. So we'll replace that in for L equals 10 times log. We're gonna be trying to solve for I, we're looking for the intensity. And it did say that M is defined to be one. So we'll replace the M with just a one which just simply means is that we have I divided by one, which is just I. So it'll be 66.6 .6 equals 10 log of I. Okay, since we're trying to solve for I, what we're gonna do, and since I is in the logarithm, we're going to get the logarithm by itself. Get the logarithm by itself. So I have the 10 times logarithm of I, and I can eliminate the 10 by dividing by 10 on both sides. So it'll cancel those out. 66.6 .6 divided by 10 is 6.66 .6 equals log of I. And recall that when we first started talking about logarithms, how it is oftentimes easier to solve a logarithmic equation if you can rewrite it as an exponential equation. So we're gonna rewrite this as an exponential equation. So the base of the log is the base of the exponent, and that's gonna be 10. What it equals, what the logarithm equals is the exponent, so that's 6.66, is going to equal i. So all we have to do is figure out what 10 to the 6.66 power is. So you take out your calculator to figure that out. And 10 to the 6.66 power is about... 4,570,882. So I is approximately 4,570,882. You can read that. Let's try another one, another application of logarithms in real world situations, earthquakes. The amount of energy E in ergs of an earthquake released is related to its Richter scale magnitude M by the equation log E equals 11.8 plus 1.5 M. 
use the equation to find the amount of energy released by the 2004 Sumatran earthquake, which measured 9.0 on the Richter scale and led to a tsunami. This was the famous Christmas uh, earthquake and the, the Christmas tsunami uh, that killed 250,000 people. So we've got our equation. We have log, and again, it is also a base 10 because earthquakes also are in a base 10 system. So every magnitude is 10 times stronger than the previous magnitude. So log base E of 11.8 plus 1.5 M. And let's see, it says that we're trying to figure out the amount of energy E, so that's what we're solving for. And we know that we have a magnitude of 9.0, so I will replace the M with 9.0. It's going to be plus 1.5 times 9.0. And when we take 11.8 plus 1.5 times 9.0, we will get, let's see, 1.5 times 9.0 is 13.5 plus 11.8, that will be 25.3. And the log is, a V is already solved for, so it's just time to change this to an exponential function to solve for E. So that'll be my, my base of my log, which is 10, to the 25.3 power is gonna equal E. So what is 10 to the 25.3 power? Well, that's a very large number. If you take 10 to the 25.3 power on your calculator, it's probably gonna give you the answer in terms of a uh, scientific notation. And it is approximately equal to 1.995 times 10 to the 25th power. That's a lot of energy. Okay, so when we first started talking about logarithms, one of the things I said was to keep this in the back of your head about how, uh, why we're doing logarithms and how we can use it to solve exponential equations. Some exponential equations we can solve in our head, like 2 to the x power equals 8. Well, 2 to what power equals 8? Well, that would be 3, so in that case, we could solve entirely mentally x equals 3. Uh, 2 to the x power equals 16, so x would have to equal 4 because we can solve mentally that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 would be 16, so x has to be 4. But we weren't ready to solve 2 to the x power equals 12 until today. Today, we're going to learn how to solve these types of exponential equations. So we're going to do that by first solving 4 to the x power equals 19, round to the nearest 10,000th. When we have an exponential equation where the x is in the exponent and we can't solve it mentally, a way to do that is to take the logarithm of both sides. So if we have 4 to the x power equals 19, we're going to take the log of both sides of that equation. In other words, log of 4 to the x will equal log of 19. And when we do that, we're still balanced because we're still taking the log of both sides. Recall from the previous lesson, when you have a log of a number with an exponent, you can simplify that by moving that exponent to the front of the problem. Because logarithms are related to exponents, and uh, just like with power of power rule, you would multiply, the same concept applies here. So by moving the x to the front of the problem, I have x log of 4 equals log of 19. And to solve for x, all i got to do now is divide by log of 4. So you would take the log of 19 divided by the log of 4. It's not going to be an exact number. We're going to get a decimal estimate and round it to the nearest 10 thousandths. So to take the log of 19 divided by the log of 4, we would take the log of 19. So you take out your calculator. And the reason we're doing uh, base 10 logs is because everybody's calculator should be a base 10 log. This technically works with any base log, but uh, doing it with base 10 is one of the more common ones. So the log of 19 is approximately equal to 
2788. And the log of 4 is approximately equal to 0 0.6021. And then you would divide that out to get your answer. Now, you will probably just want to leave that in your calculator in its entirety. You wouldn't want to round the top and round the bottom. So if I would just type in the log of 19, depending on the calculator how you would do it, divided by the log of 4, you would get approximately equal to 2.1240. If we ran it to the nearest 10,000th, that would be four places behind the decimal. And you can verify this. If you take 4 to the 2.1240 power, you will get uh, very close to 19. It probably won't be exactly 19 since it is rounded a little bit, but it'll be very close to it. So now let's go ahead and solve that 2 to the x power equals 12. So to solve that, we are going to take the log of both sides. So we'll have log of 2 to the x equals log of 12. We'll move that x to the front using our one of our rules for logarithms. So that'll be x log of 2 equals log of 12. And then divide by log of 2. So we have to take the log of 2 and divide it by, excuse me, the log of 12 and divide it by the log of 2. So when you take the log of 12, the log of 12 is about 1.0792. And you'll divide that by the log of 2. And that is approximately 0 0.3010. And when you divide that out, the log of 12 divided by the log of 2, you get approximately... 3.5850. The last concept is mainly for you that are using the Texas Instrument calculators. This probably won't really apply to those of you who have the Casio change of base calculators. Um, it's called the change of base formula. If you have to do a logarithm, and that it is not a base 10 logarithm, you can still use your Texas Instrument calculators by using the change of base formula. Change of base formula is simply, if you have the log of some base of some number, you can figure out the answer by taking the log of the number divided by the log of the base. So for example, the log base 3 of 11 can be found by taking the log of 11 divided by the log of 3. Notice they're also using base 10s because everybody's calculator should be in at least a base 10. So to figure out the log base 3 of 20, you would take just the log of 20 divided by the log of 3 and do like we did just above. So the log of 20 divided by the log of 3, so log of 20 is about 1.0310 divided by the log of 3. Log of 3 is about 0 0.4771. And when you divide that out, you get approximately 2.72. Six, eight. There we go. Practice one more. See if you can do this on your own before you check the, uh, before you watch the video. So the log base six of eight would be the log of eight divided by the log of six. So the log of the number divided by the log of the base. So the log of eight is approximately equal to 0.9031. The log of 6 is approximately equal to 0 0.7782. And then when you divide that out, you get approximately equal to 
Again, rounded to the nearest ten thousandth.